Hi, everyone. I am thrilled to have our guest, heart surgeon, Dr. Philip Ovedia, who wrote perhaps the most important book of 2021, 2022, and beyond 2023. Let's jump in. What is the name of your book, Dr. Ovedia, and why did you name your book that? Thanks for having me on, Amalia. The book is called Stay Off My Operating Table, and I named the book that because that's exactly what I want people to do. Um, I, in my long career as a heart surgeon, I have operated now on over 3,000 sick hearts, and what I have come to realize is that most of those cases are preventable, and almost every time someone ends up on my operating table, it is because the healthcare system has failed that person. We have failed to teach people how to remain healthy because we have been so focused on taking care of sick people. And so I am on a mission to keep people off of my operating table. I love it. And speaking about failure, I, my view is that the failure was we trusted in certain systems, maybe pharma, maybe corporations, instead of in ourselves and finding the right doctor that believes in what we believe. So I'd like to know, what is your story? Did you have any health issues and how did you come to write this book and change what you were doing? Yes. So um, I was at a point um, that I was a very unhealthy heart surgeon and I was morbidly obese. I was pre-diabetic. And I had gotten that way following the advice that I was giving all of my patients, the advice that I was taught um, to tell people to give, you know, to uh, give my patients to help them become healthy. And it wasn't working for me. And over and over, I saw it wasn't working for them either. So I started asking some different questions and I was able to seek out some different information, some alternative ideas about why we get sick, why we get overweight and obese, um, why we get things like diabetes. And ultimately, I was able to lose over 100 pounds. I was able to reverse my pre-diabetes. And more importantly, I then started to recognize that this is what could be helping my patients. Um, because as blessed as I feel to be a heart surgeon and to be able to offer that service to people who need it at that time, I would much rather they not need the heart surgery in the first place. No matter how good a heart surgeon I am, no matter how good all the other heart surgeons and really, you know, the physicians out there are, you're never as good after you have heart surgery as you would be if you didn't need the heart surgery in the first place. Uh, so, and, it, you know, I now know and I now can educate my patients and help people to understand that our diet, our lifestyle are the main factors that lead to us getting heart disease. And therefore, those are going to be the main solutions we need to prevent us from getting heart disease. That's incredible. Thank you, Dr. Ovedia. You know, you said you feel blessed being a heart surgeon. You can help so many people. And I feel that I'm blessed and anyone who buys this book is incredibly blessed. I had it this weekend at a bunch of people at my house and I already had a bunch of people wanting to borrow it. I already sent it to my doctor friend in New York. So I just feel so blessed that you put together all the doctors I've been following for two and a half years. You put it all into one book and you made it pretty small. So I think people who don't feel they're great readers or haven't been reading for a while because they're looking at their phone, it's, it's just the perfect book. So I wanted to know, how can people get in touch with you, number one? And I can add some links in the description. And then I'm really in part one, because we're going to get into part two later. I want to focus on cholesterol, what it means, what it's all about, and, and then also how to eat for mental health. So can you tell us how to get in touch with you, what your website is, and what do you do for people? Sure thing. So um, OvadiaHeartHealth.com, O-V-A-D-I-A HeartHealth.com um, is the uh, website uh, that has all of my information. It has a link uh, for people who are interested in joining my telemedicine practice. Um, I work with people throughout the United States uh, to help them improve their health, avoid heart disease, or manage their heart disease if they already have it and um, you know, stay off my operating table ultimately is our goal. Um, one other great resource that I have um, is at ifixhearts.com. 
And this is a calculator that is going to allow people to determine if they are metabolically healthy or not. And uh, we'll certainly get into that discussion as to what goes into that. But I believe that metabolic health is the most important metric or set of metrics that we should be keeping an eye on uh, for people who want to avoid things like diabetes and heart disease. Wonderful. So those are the two ways people should get in touch with you. Should they email you or that's the best way, those two websites? Uh, the best way is to go through the website and then it has uh, various uh, channels to contact me and my team, depending on what they're looking for. Okay. And you just mentioned metabolic health. Can you explain to us what metabolic health is and what it's not? Sure thing. So metabolic health basically um, describes the way that our bodies respond to the inputs that we are giving it. And the biggest input we give it is the food that we eat. When we eat, one of three things is supposed to happen to that food. Some of it gets turned immediately into energy so that we can fuel all of our activities. And those are all the cellular level microscopic activities going in, going on in our bodies. And those are all the higher level you know, activities like walking around uh, that we do every day. Some of that food gets broken down and is used to build and rebuild our tissues, a process that is constantly going on within our bodies. And finally, some of that is supposed to get turned into energy that can be used later on when food or energy isn't readily available to us. We have to realize that for much of our existence as human beings, the vast majority of time we have been on you know, this planet, um, there were frequent times when food and energy wasn't readily available to us. So we needed to have a way to survive those times. Now, our modern food environment is such that that has become a rare event. Uh, most of us are constantly surrounded by food or at least things that resemble food, and we'll get into that later on. But it has led to a problem where we now have an abundance of energy and we end up storing excess energy, and that has a whole host of downstream effects uh, that, it, that occur when our metabolic processes, our metabolic health gets broken. Great. Okay. So that's metabolic health. And I think along with that, would you agree cholesterol is part of that system? Cholesterol is healthy. I think there's a lot of confusion about cholesterol today. I'm going to explain what I think it is and please correct me. And then I have a question about it. Based on what I've learned, it's, it's something to do with, we get sun, which gives us vitamin D and somehow that converts it into cholesterol and only humans and, and animals have cholesterol, you know, plants don't have that. And some doctors, or maybe it was pharma pharmaceutical companies tell us certain parts of cholesterol are good, some are bad, you need to have high HDL, bad, and your, excuse me, your HDL should be high, your LDL is bad if it's too high. But I also thought that it helps convert vitamin K1 into K2, which keeps our insulin level stable. It helps our testosterone and estrogen. So if we're gonna say, you know, if we're gonna take some pills, we go out because we have to lower certain parts of our cholesterol, that seems to me it's tantamount to saying, you know, men need testosterone for healthy living, but take this bill, pill, lower part of your testosterone. You don't need this part of it or that part of it. Can you tell us about cholesterol? Is some of it good? Is some of it bad? Do we need to take pills? Sure. So cholesterol is essential to life. Um, you know, without cholesterol, we as humans couldn't live. As you said, every animal has cholesterol. Uh, plants actually do have cholesterol. It's just in a different form. Uh, so um, it, it is essential to life. Um, and it, it, um, is part of almost every process that you can look at in the human body, it turns out. Um, everything from, you know, hormones to immunity to, uh, you know, it, it literally forms um, the cell wall structures are made of cholesterol partially. So cholesterol is essential to life. And it is only recently, you know, within the past, uh, 70 years or so, that there started to be a concept that cholesterol um, is a harmful substance. Um, now, it is true that cholesterol does participate in the process that ultimately leads to us getting things like heart disease. Um, but 
it's not the cholesterol that I believe is the problem. Um, cholesterol is actually one of the body's repair mechanisms. So when our blood vessel walls get damaged, cholesterol is sent to repair the damage. And if you keep damaging the blood vessel wall, that cholesterol can ultimately start to build up and cause problems. Um, when I look at a problem such as that, I would say, okay, let's stop damaging the blood vessel wall. Um, but others have looked at that problem and say, well, if we just take away the cholesterol or we lower the amount of cholesterol available, we can impact that problem. And there's a whole lot of uh, you know, science and stuff that we can get into on that. Uh, but ultimately, uh, the, the bottom line is that cholesterol is essential to life. And I don't believe that the focus on lowering cholesterol um, has been the proper approach to preventing heart disease. So again, I'm going to do a part three, just personally on my own about my journey with mental health. I had anxiety. A doctor might've diagnosed it with depression, but I just know that I didn't care about getting up in the morning. I didn't have joy. I felt doom in my diaphragm and I increased my ruminant meat, my red meats tremendously. So I'd like to ask your opinion on that. If I'm a vegan, which I was in the past, it didn't work for me. I wasn't able to donate blood to the Red Cross. I was fatigued. So if those animals are not sacrificed so that me and my family can eat it, is perhaps our mental health sacrificed? I guess my question is, if we're vegan, if we're plant-based, which is very trendy today, can we have a healthy mind? Can we have a healthy gut, joints, and body? Yeah. So one of the things I talk about in my book is that there is no uh, one diet, um, perhaps that is going to work for everyone. Um, and my focus is on metabolic health and metabolic health. It turns out has impacts on things like mental health. Um, we now have a, you know, growing, uh, uh, set of data. I'll say, uh, more and more evidence every day, um, that mental health and metabolic health are very closely related. So my focus is on being metabolically healthy. Can you be metabolically healthy on a vegan diet? Um, the answer is yes, you can, but it is very difficult to do. Uh, you definitely have to supplement. It is you know, un indisputable uh, that you can get all of the essential nutrients that the human body needs from plant products alone. So it is mandatory to supplement if you are going to be healthy on a vegan diet. Um, it is very hard to get the proper um, uh, a, a balance of amino acids and, and enough protein through a vegan diet. So unfortunately, what I oftentimes see is that people on vegan diets end up nutrient deficient, and that can certainly have effects on things like mental health. Um, we evolved eating meat. Um, we as humans evolved eating meat. You cannot, again, dispute that fact. Uh, and so our bodies clearly must have had millions of years uh, where we adapted and we optimized for eating meat. Um, the vegan diet is a modern invention. Um, like processed food, um, it, you know, was not described uh, prior to probably 100, maybe 150 years ago. And again, that gets back to the fact that you need to supplement and we didn't have all these vitamins and, and mineral supplements uh, available uh, more than you know uh, that long ago. Uh, so the vegan diet is a modern invention. Um, my, eating meat is our ancestral um, history. And therefore, I believe that meat is an important part of our diet. I believe that meat is a beneficial and healthy part of our diet. And um, ultimately, a lot of the um, health problems that have been attributed to eating meat uh, are also just not founded in good scientific data. So thanks to you, Dr. Ovedia and other doctors, in the past, I was vegan that I went to vegetarian because the entire planet seems to be really encouraging us to be plant-based. It's, it's, it's quite the popular word. And again, it wasn't working for me. I had to look for other foods because I didn't want to keep supplementing. It was too difficult. What you taught me, especially in your book and listening to some of your interviews is that this is what it seems like. 
animals, like let's say the ruminant meats, like the cow, the sheep, the goat, the deer, they're eating the plants, they're consuming it, they're processing the good and the bad through their four stomach process. And then we get the benefit of their protein. And even things around our, our neighborhood, let's say the rabbits, they're eating the plant-based foods and they're processing it for themselves. So it seems like it's okay for humans to eat meat. It's okay for humans to have butter and eggs. However, then if I'm gonna to choose to be vegan like I was in the past or vegetarian, I might have more boxed foods like cereals, maybe margarine because I don't wanna have the butter. If I look at a lot of the vegan ingredients, if I, if I don't wanna just have plants and I wanna have a little something you know, fun to eat. Sometimes it's boxed or in bags. And then all of a sudden there's seed oil. So I'd like to ask you about cereals, about margarine and about seed oils or that, oh, some people call vegetable oils. Are those, are those healthy? And what is it? Right. So I, again, um, processed food in all of its forms is a major contributor to our poor health as a society. Um, you can look at um, as processed food spread throughout the world, you can see over and over that ancestral populations, their health starts to decline. So I advocate, uh, the main premise of my book is eat whole real food. Uh, and that means eliminating processed food. Now, whole real food, uh, I, I say it includes you know, the things that grow in the ground and the things that eat the things that grow in the ground um, is a very simple way to think about it. Um, your food really should not have an ingredient list. Um, if it does have an ingredient list, it should be simple ingredients that you know what they are and they're all, you know, based in whole real food. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially for me, the more I listen to doctors like you and read your book, that it seems like seed oil is a big problem. And a lot of people have a lot of seed oil. What I'd like to do is to go into part two. So I'd like to uh, stop the interview in a few moments. I want to remind people how they can get a hold of you and how they can get a hold of me. But in part two, we'll talk about meat for mental health, how to lose weight for people struggling with either obesity or even just being chubby. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about that I miss? I, I also want to talk about fiber. Do we really need to increase our fiber or is that a myth? Um, things like that. Uh, can you tell people what else you want to talk about in part two and also uh, remind them how to get a hold of you? Yeah, so uh, I think we'll certainly go in a little bit more detail as to how you can measure and assess your metabolic health and some tips for improving it. Uh, but uh, until then, um, please come visit me at ovadiahearthealth.com. And again, if you go to ifixhearts.com, you can take a quiz to help you determine if you are metabolically healthy or not. And to reach out to me, it's growthfactor.org at gmail.com, or that's the website, growthfactor.org. I help with nutrition tips, what helped me heal from anxiety, maybe call it depression. And I can help you with, I also do a little hypnotherapy, went to school for a year to help you relax and change some behaviors. So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Dr. Ovedia. And we're going to go into part two.